True History of the Kelly Gang, which is the new film from Justin Kurzel, an Australian director of uh, Snowtown and Macbeth, were his first two features, which were each uh, among my favourite films of the years in which they were released, and Assassin's Creed, which was not, mm. and was just an incredibly strange move for Justin Kurzel as a filmmaker. Because and Michael Fassbender. I didn't, well, that was the thing, Michael Fassbender and Marion Cotillard, who were Macbeth and Lady Macbeth in Macbeth. Crazy. And were just exceptionally good in a, in a film that is for me one of the great Shakespeare adaptations uh, they they all made this video game based blockbuster together and it doesn't even feel like a misstep it just feels like this strange sort of aberration that mm. dropped into his career and, and and he had to climb over like a big concrete lump or something anyway he's past that now he's back to <laughs> he's back to the kind of films that he uh, that, that, that seem to speak to his peculiar interests and that he does incredibly well indeed Snowtown and Macbeth both were films about men who leave a, a bloody stain on history. You know, they, they do incredibly violent things, but the violence of their actions kind of rings through time and space, right? It alters the world around them. Macbeth, of course, to do with succession to the throne and, you know, trying to steer the Kingdom of Scotland one way or the other. And Snowtown, which is based on the, the, the true story of the Snowtown murders in, uh, in, in the Australian suburbs, which was this completely horrific case that cast, you know, this horrible, bloodthirsty, gothic Paul across just normal sort of uh, working class Australian suburbia. And the true history of the Kelly gang is, is is about this kind of stuff as well, because Ned Kelly is an Australian folk hero. Uh, he's often described as Australia's Robin Hood. But the comparison is kind of strained because he wasn't this compassionate vigilante who was robbing from the rich to give to the poor. He was uh, what was known as a bush ranger, which is effectively a highwayman. So he's going around sticking people up, stealing their stuff, you know, having shootouts with the police. And he was hanged at the age of 25 after this famous siege where, of course, he... Spoiler. He wore this... I mean, look, this is history. <laughs> we can do this. We can do this. Where he was famously wearing this bucket-shaped helmet with this tiny eye slit mm. and this, this, you know, plate metal armour. This was his, you know, this very potent symbol of his total rejection of Australian authority. This was his land. He was going to do as he pleased on it. And, and and these guys, you know, to take him down, we're going to have to absolutely basically destroy him. And and, and that, of course, at the age of 25 is, is, is what happened to the guy. Um, now, this is a story that has been adapted in cinema many, many times. In fact, one of the first ever feature films made uh, was the story of the Kelly Gang. We were talking earlier, actually, about uh, Sweet Country, the Warwick Thornton Australian yeah. Outback Western. The story of the Kelly Gang makes a lovely cameo appearance in that. It's being watched in the village from a projector up, from, on, a, from what year? up on a cloth. Um, well, Sweet Country was set in the early 1900s. Oh, right. So, so but, really, but, really early feature film. Yeah, but the story of the Kelly Gang, yes, it was released in 1906. Mm. One, of, one of the first feature Whoa, films ever okay. made. Uh, then, of course, there was a Tony Richardson version from 1970 that starred Mick Jagger. And then there was more recently a uh, Gregor Jones one from 2003 that starred Heath Ledger. So the Ned Kelly story has been told and retold, and that's not what Justin Carsley is trying to do. What he's doing is kind of pulling apart the legend to kind of examine what it is about this character, who is basically despicable, that has wormed its way into like the essential Australian male character. The film starts with this uh, title card saying, nothing you're about to see is true. So it's playing fast and loose with what actually happened. But then, of course, that's the nature of a myth, is that it does play fast and loose with what actually happened. It's adapted uh, by Sean Grant, who wrote Snowtown, from a novel by Peter Carey, a great Australian writer. And the novel was doing the same stuff as this. It's about deconstructing the myth and seeing why this figure matters so much and looms so large in the uh, Australian national consciousness. Ned Kelly, as an adult in the film, is played by George Mackay, who we mentioned mm -hmm. previously, coming, you know, somehow scrambling free from the rubble of 1917 to <laughs> into this land of, like, total desolation. The, the, the place where we see is his kind of outback homestead where he lives with his mother, uh, who's played by Essie Davis, is in the middle of this field of what looks like burnt bones. I mean, it's a bushfire has obviously swept across this plain many years ago, so you have these toothpick-like trees all black and charred against the, the grey sky and the grey earth this incredible picture of desolation. And this is where this, uh, this, this guy has grown up. There's actually the first section of the film. Uh, he's uh, we, The young Ned Kelly is played by a, a child actor called Orlando Schwartz, who is really terrific. And the, the sense of what this small house in the middle of nowhere is, is it's kind of like a petri dish for toxic masculinity. So you have his mother played by Essie Davis, who piles on these incredible expectations on him, particularly he becomes the man of the house, age 12 of what it means to kind of stand up and be a man and do your bit for your family and your country. Uh, he's also tormented by a British sergeant played by Charlie Hunnam, who has this 
strange, uh, maybe it's romantic, maybe it's transactional liaison with his mother. And he's also taken under the wing of this elderly bush ranger called Harry Power, who's played by Russell Crowe in one of his kind of beardiest and grimiest <laughs> screen appearances ever, which is completely delightful. But so there's this this sense that, you know, something horrible, there's a genesis of something toxic and horrible happening here. And Ned Kelly himself is patient zero. And here's a clip of him having an incredibly tense conversation. This is the, the adult Ned uh, with, with his mother, Essie Davis. OK. You abandoned us. I was always going to come back. When we're all in soil. I've got money now. <sighs> Don't want your money. He's the young fella dressed like a clown. George and I had to be married. He's from California. Yeah. So where are those horses from? Don't matter where they're from. Let's say you help Ian Van escort him across the Murray tomorrow. George says there's more where they come from too. A great big mob of them on James Whitty's property. Them horses are stolen. Come to farm, not steal. And your boy husband shouldn't be talking down into Duffin neither. George King has taught your brother to be a man. Like Harry Power was to teach me. You know nothing of my life. You ain't been here. There ain't a thing on this land for a woman but loneliness. Now, later his mother says to him, are, are there no men of substance in this godforsaken country? This idea that someone kind of has to step up. And of course, that, that, that's the role that Ned will play in, in Australian culture. The film's carved into three parts, boy, man and monitor. And it's about the, you know, the creation, the genesis, and then the spread and then the consolidation of the, the Ned Kelly legend. And uh, in, in, in every section, he's surrounded by these, these really intriguing characters who, who each contribute in their own way to the, the 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 man that he will become and the myth that he will become. Essie Davis, as we, we heard there, is just completely brilliant, a force of nature as, as his mother. Charlie Hunnam, who I have an enormous soft spot for, is, is it, it's incredibly good here. And Russell Crowe, of course, is having lots of fun. Then when he becomes an adult, uh, you have Nicholas Holt comes into the picture as Constable Fitzpatrick, who's this very colonial style English officer who's overseeing the you know, the, uh, the the transported rabble who've come over from mm -hmm. Ireland and their offspring to, right. to carve out a, a sorry existence in this landscape. Earl Cave, uh, the son of Nick Cave, plays his brother Dan. And Thomas and Mackenzie from, from Jojo Rabbit plays this young uh, brothel worker who becomes his, his beloved in a sense, his kind of uh, partner, but exactly how strong the romantic bond is between them is is not entirely clear. Right. I mean, what I would say is in 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 both the the childhood and the the adulthood sections, the the performances are completely brilliant across the board. It's it definitely George, George Mackay's best performance in his career, I I think. Nicholas Holt as well, certainly up there. I mean, there's and it's an extraordinary against type performance from Nicholas Holt as well. There's a great sequence where. He and uh, Ned are relaxing in an establishment of ill repute and uh, Holt is kind of sprawled across a chaise long wearing nothing but stockings and suspenders. Now, if you, if you look up, this is not a film that's for everyone, OK? Sure. If you look up, and it becomes progressively more unhinged as well. There's a real punk rock attitude coursing through this that comes to the fore as the film progresses, there's, you know, strobe lighting comes in, glowing colours. It, the film itself becomes unhinged with, as Ned himself becomes unhinged. And yeah, if you, if you look up, not for everyone, in the dictionary, you'll find a picture of Nicholas Holt wearing nothing but stockings and suspenders, right? <laughs> it's not, so it's not, it's not for everyone, but that is for me. I was really, like, thrilled to the absolute marrow by this, because particularly because it starts in this crazed register and then just keeps getting crazier. Mm. If you're prepared to just cling on for dear life to this thing, it takes you to some fairly incredible places. I'm fully in. I can't wait to see it. I meant to see it on Monday, missed it. I'm going to maybe watch it tonight or tomorrow. I can't wait.